Hello everyone and welcome to my video on this, the, oh man. All right, I'm just gonna apologize to all my Japanese viewers up front for what I'm about to do to your language. Toa Koki Arson 127 half frame camera. I think I actually got that fairly okay. This is a 127 film viewfinder camera. It's a half frame 127 camera. It has no light meter a leaf shutter with shutter speeds of 1 5th to 1 250th of a second in the old speed format, which is 5th, 10th, 25th, 50th, 75th, 100th, and 250th, as well as bulb and time. Bulb is as long as you hold the shutter down, the shutter will be open. Time is you hold the shutter down to open it, you hold the shutter down again to close it. The flash sync on the speed is only bulb and time, unless you're very, very, very good at syncing your flash with the other speeds because there's no flash sync on this lens. The only way to trigger a flash is by manually triggering it when the shutter is open. So the Arsen 127 is a rebadged Gelto and it was marketed by Ars. Ars was the, is now defunct, but they were at the time, the publisher of the Japanese camera magazine, Ars Camera. Arsen, that's where that comes from. The Arsen 127 Gelto was marketed towards the traveling hobbyist. It used 127 film, which were perfect for what were called bright slides for, from vacations. They're slightly larger than 35 millimeter, but could still fit inside of a 35 millimeter slide projector mask. That's who this was meant for. 127 was and has always been a hobbyist format, not meant or not seen as a serious format for cameras, but also a bit bigger than 35 millimeter, which was a mass market format. The shutter gives enough shutter speeds and aperture control to allow for good slide film ap uh, exposure control. And it used a three element anastigmat lens for relatively good image quality. Apparently, I'm just going to have to kind of trust that for for the time, good image quality for the time. Now, the reason I'm going to have to trust that is that this lens is absolutely filled with fungus. Um, the shutter does work, but the lens, uh, I, I couldn't figure out how to take it apart to clean it without disassembling the shutter more than I was comfortable. So uh, it's just going to kind of be like that. This also has an automatic frame counter with a reset, and you don't need to rely on the film backing paper numbering because of that. This was made by Gelto in Japan, likely from 1936 until 1942, and was originally sold as the Arsen in 1938. So if you have your Arsen Gelto or Gelto or any of the others of these that existed that used the same basic body, of which there were many variations over the years, we're gonna go over everything on the camera and talk about what everything is, starting of course here on the top. This is a flash cold shoe, but it's not just for flashes. You could mount a flash here and manually trigger it. This would really be more for range finders. There were range finder attachments you could put into these cold shoes that you could then look through to figure out the distance to your subject. Here is the mound for your viewfinder. This is your, your film release. And the way this is quite a fascinating film release, if I can get it open, it is very fiddly to get open. And the way that this works, we'll see in just a minute, is that when you open this, the top comes off and then you load the cameras, you load the camera from the top. It's the only camera I know of that has a top loading feature. Here's your frame count window and here is your film advance knob right there. And it's an interesting mechanism. It locks so you can't advance it too far and to unlock it, you push and turn and then it will advance the film. On the camera's front, we have the viewfinder window. We have the focusing mechanism right here, which certainly seems not to be doing a whole lot on this camera. I guess the, fill, the lens is moving in and out just a little bit like that. Here we have the lens and all of the markings, the actual taking lens and the information, arson, your shutter speeds, which are controlled this way by adjusting the lens right through there. Lens arming lever, lens firing lever, on top of the lens, we have your aperture 
scales. And so, so basically you just rotate this dial to select the aperture that you want to use. And then you, we have the focusing scale up here on the top. Uh, meters is on the bottom on this camera. Feet is on the top on this camera. And there is probably a way by undoing a couple of these screws to rotate that for different markets. I take that back. I goofed. This is all in meters. It's just that here we go. Ah, this is very fidgety to try to, to move around. So at any rate, this, this mechanism is in uh, rough shape. So you have a focus point of down to, I guess, 1.5 meters. Looks like if you remove this screw, it could probably focus closer than that. I don't know. I'm not going to try it. Oh, there we go. You just have to lift it up to get past this screw down here on the bottom. Oh, goodness, this camera. Okay, and you can focus as close as 0 0.5 meters right there. On the camera's back, we have the viewfinder window here, the frame count reset lever right here, and then your frame alignment windows right here. So you could advance with the numbers, but you don't have to because of the mechanism. In fact, I don't think you're supposed to. These are to help you get your alignment corrected when you first load the film. And then when you have finished loading the film and advanced it, you get to the end of your frame, end of your window, or frame, roll rather, you're supposed to do something with this lever, which I figured out one time. I think, you know what it is? I think this is locked until you've gone through the entire roll of film. And then when you get through that entire roll, it will, you use that lever to reset it. Let's see if my memory is correct here. Okay, so I've gotten through the entire roll, and will it let me reset? I remember there being some trick to getting this to work, and I figured it out once, and I am not figuring it out again. So anyway, it might just be that this lever is jammed. These were um, not the most highly well-made cameras, to say the least. But uh, the way that this was supposed to work is that you would uh, push this over to the side, and it would reset your frame count back to start. And you need that to work in order for you, your film to, to work correctly in this camera. So at any rate, uh, we'll try to figure that out before we get too terribly far into this video. On the bottom of the camera, not a whole lot to see. Tripod socket and your serial number. So we've seen inside the camera a couple of times. We'll take one more look. And there's not really a whole lot to see in here because of the way this is built. But... Here's the lock. So the way that this locks in place, this little oval slides right into there. And then when you twist the lock, it just grips it. These are where the 127 uh, spools go. I do not have any 127 film. I just have one spool left. But basically, you would uh, put the take up spool, the, the you would load your 127 paper into this slot right here. And then you'd have your other your other roll and you'd feed them back through this little slit right here, slide them into place, and then put the back of the camera on like this. It's going to be a bit fidgety because you have to line up the advance knob with the spool. There we go. Close that. And now you would need to then reset <laughs> Reset this. That eh, might just be jammed. But then you would reset the frame count with this, and then you'd be able to start advancing the film. If you can't reset the frame count and it's just going to click like this, at that point you could use the, the red windows to advance the film. Each number on the film back would be seen in this. So you'd go to frame one, frame one, two, two, three, three, as you go through the entire roll of film. And that would give you double the standard number of frames which I believe normally it would be four by four. That will make it a four by two frame, which is half frame. Maybe it's four by six and two by three. You're, no, it is. Normally it's four by six for a full frame of 127. Two by three in portrait orientation is half frame on 127. So uh, you could use the red windows with this camera if your frame reset lever is jammed like this one is. So once you have film loaded into the camera, you're going to want to be able to take some photos. And to do that, you have to use the lens correctly. The first thing to do is to pull the lens out. If you don't pull the lens out, it's not going to focus light properly. To adjust the aperture, you just rotate this rear dial right here to the aperture that you want to use. 
To adjust the shutter, you select the shutter speed that you want on the front of the camera here, arm the shutter, and then when you're ready to take a photo, you take the picture like that. So just make sure that when you arm your shutter, you're lined up with the line and that you don't turn your shutter away from the selected number that you've, the selected speed after it's armed. Once you arm the shutter, if you adjust the, the, the dial on this, you can, you can mess up your mechanism. So if you realize you've made a mistake and you actually don't want to take a photo at this setting, cover it, the lens with your hand, take the photo, readjust your setting, and then take the correct speed photo. Then to focus, all you have to do is adjust your focus with this lever right here, and that will move the lens in and out as you adjust focus. In order to get a proper focus, you've got to know your, your subject distance. So that's where a rangefinder mechanism would come in here, or just kind of eyeballing the distance to your subject and setting your focus. And of course, as long as you're using a smaller aperture than say f4.5, you'll have a reasonably good depth of field that you can allow to cover for some slight mistakes in judging your subject distance. And so now that we've seen how to use the lens, set the aperture, set the shutter speed, taking a photo is really simple. You just arm the, the lens and take a photo. So what about double exposures? Double exposures with this camera, super simple because the lens is not coupled to the advanced mechanism. So all you have to do for the mechanics of it, arm the shutter, take a photo, arm the shutter, take a photo, and you've taken your double exposure. And that's the mechanics. After you then, of course, take your double exposure, you want to advance the film until you get to the end, and uh, or until you get to your next frame, rather, and then keep going. The science of the double exposure is that a, a is film is designed to accept a certain number of photons to create an image. So let's say that you take your light meter reading, and a single photo is one, let's call it 75th of a second at f8, okay? And that's a good proper photo. If you want to take a double exposure, you've got to cut the amount of light reaching your film in half. There's two ways to do that. With the aperture, it's very easy. All you have to do is adjust this one stop to a smaller setting, which would be f11. Every time you adjust from one number to the next, you're cutting the amount of light in half going this direction or doubling it if you go this direction. So f5.6 is twice as much light as f8. So to do a double exposure, you can just go to f11. But if you really want to use f8, you could also go and use your shutter speed. Well, 175th is not actually a good example. Let's pretend I've said 150th all along. So half as much light from 150th is 1 100th of a second, right? So you could do a double exposure by doing first photo, second photo. If you wanted to get creative, you could do one photo at 1 100th and f8, and one photo at 1 50th and f11. Any combination like that is fine. All you have to do for a double exposure is make sure that each frame gets half as much light as it's supposed to, and then after you're done, you just advance the film until you reach the next frame and move on. I do have some tips for using this camera for you. The first is to verify your focus. I saw a lot of photos online taken with these, and they were all all terribly focused. And so I can't imagine that these lenses and cameras were actually as bad as those photos make it look. So my guess is that a lot of the people using these either didn't pull the lens out or didn't pull it out all the way, or were just shooting it at infinity focus and not actually adjusting the lens's focus point. Also, you can check the lens for fungus on this by shining a light through the rear window and having the lens in time. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to switch to time right now, arm the shutter, make sure we're at f4.5, open up the shutter, red windows are open, and let's take a look into the lens. There we go. It's going to be kind of hard to see, I know, but you might be able to see that there is some nasty, nasty fungus inside of this camera lens. There we go. It, in fact, it is so bad that I really don't think this camera would be able to record an image with any sort of clarity at all because that is completely covering the rear element of the lens. And the problem with that, of course, is that it's going to be basically impossible to clean this because of the way these are assembled. They weren't screwed together. They, I mean, they do have some screw assemblies, but the, the body of these was actually uh, 
riveted together and pressed into shape so that it can't be disassembled without undoing the rivets and re-welding it. Really kind of frustrating. Uh, so anyway, that's everything there is about the Arson Gelto 127. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in whatever video comes next.